Before we even get to Yasantua, let's talk a little bit about the Asante people from which she came. Who were they? Brief background of the Asante, and then we'll dive into the personality of uh, the day, Yasantua. Well, I will start by saying that Ashanti is simply one of the many Akan states. You know, the Akans had originated from the Bono area. You know, all Akans are Bono people to start with. And among the Bonos, those who broke away and went to unite because of war, Asante, we call them the Ashantis. Mm. Ashanti is an English word, it's an Anglicization of Asante. Okay. And which literally Asante means... Asante because of war. Because of war. Because of war. Mm. Not because they wanted to conquer, mm -hmm. but because they wanted their independence. Mm. You see, when the Ashanti people settled in the Amansia area, today between uh, Asumeja and Bekwai, they were living among the Adansi people and then the Dentra people. And we learn from history that the dangerous had actually conquered all of them and all the states were subservient to danger. And we learn from history that at any point in time, the danger would ask you, bring your favorite wives, bring all the gold that you have. We also learn that the Doma people would bump upon the Ashantis mm -hmm. and then fight them. At that time, the Domas were not in the Bono region. They were just living around the same area, mm -hmm. an area called Suntresu. Mm -hmm. And they even killed one of the Ashanti chiefs called Obiri Yabua. So the Ashantis felt, or these Amansia people felt, they had to come together because of the many wars against them. Mm -hmm. So not the wars they would fight. Mm -hmm. Because of the many wars against them, they would unite and then protect their independence, which indeed they did when after the death of Obiri Yabua, a very able person, in the, a, a very able person called Osei Tutu, being the nephew of Obiri Yabua, who at that time was seven, more or less as a page boy in Denchira, and had escaped to uh, Akwemu, mm. because we are told that he had a relationship with the Denchira, his niece called Abina mm. and they were looking for his, his head, so he had to escape to Akwemu. For two reasons, Osei Tutu will go to Akwemu. The first one was that there was a famous Akwapim priest or herbalist, traditional priest. Those days, our prophet called uh, Okonfo Anochi. Mm -hmm. He was an Akwapim. But at that time, the Akwapims were under the Akwamus. So to call yourself Akwapim was also the same as calling yourself an Akwemu. He was very popular among the dangerous, but because of misunderstanding between the two, they wanted to kill him and he had to go back home. And Osei Tutu knew him when the two of them were together mm. in danger and looking for a place to go. Ashanti, he would not be able to go because of the uh, persistent wars. And as a royal, he feared they would kill him. So he had to look for a place to go. And the safest place was Konfanochi's place, the person he knew. And then also, when he was a young boy, he had already been taken there because his mother was barren. And the uh, Ashanti warriors had to travel to a place called Tutu, you know, to look for herbs for the woman to use in order to produce a child. And it worked. So they named him Osei and then Tutu, the place they went, the Tutu God. So they became Osei. Tutu. So I said Tutu was very familiar with Akwemu. Mm -hmm. He went there and started working there for some time. Then he heard that his uncle had been killed in a war with the Doma people and therefore had to come back to become the chief of Kwamai or Amansia. And he had to come with his friend uh, Konfuanochi. Mm -hmm. Why? Okonfanochi had planned to pay the Dentra people back in their own coins. So he felt like doing everything miraculous and then everything that wisdom could achieve in order to build a new state that would be bigger and more prosperous, even greater than 
danger. Mm. So he came with him. Now, on his way, the Akwamuhine, realizing that the young man you are traveling with, with is not an ordinary man. All along, we thought that he was a slave from Denchira. Today, we have learned that he's a royal mm. from Asante. So we have to get him men, about 500 mm. men, to accompany mm. him. Yeah. So the accompany him, the leader of the Akwamu group was called Enum Asamwa. And when they go to Kwamai, later to become Kumasi, you see, before the uh, Kuma trees were planted by Kwamfanochi to determine which town would be the Asante capital, Kumasi was called Kwamai. Mm -hmm. And then they planted another one in a town which is now called Kumewu. So he went back as uh, Kwamai, and the Enum people who accompanied him, they settled them at a place called Enum. Ashanti preserved the name, but because we, uh, by way of pronunciation, have corrupted it, it has become a doom, which is about the most famous part of Kumasi. In the heart because, of Kumasi. Yes, because mm. of commercial mm. activities. That's where Enum Asamwa mm. settled with his people. Mm. And they were placed under the domain of the Asafuhine. But the chief of defense staff of Ashanti would be Bantama Hine. Now, as a uh, Konfanochi having settled in Ashanti, he had to start work. And as I began by saying, this man was so wise, and history says that among the wisest of all black people born to this earth, Konfanochi should be counted among the foremost, and we should acknowledge that. Not because he was a man of miracles or magic. That one is based on oral tradition and you cannot prove it. So we have to discount that. But we are talking about practical wisdom. The first thing he did for the Ashanti people was this. That if anybody would respect you, you would need a capital which would be accepted by all the people. And ge geographically located at a place such that it will be easier to defend mm. and protect at all times. So he identified Kumewu and then Kwaman. And the result is what we said. The tree, the Kume tree planted at Kwaman blossomed. And it said that that place should be the capital. The second one was that. So Kumasi literally means what? The, under, under the, the Kuma tree. tree. Kuma tree. Under the Kuma tree. Mm. Some say kum to my FK boy say kuma. Kuma, 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 kuma as say, uh -huh. and then kuma ewu, maybe a kuma ewu. Where the other tree died. Died. Okay. Uh -huh. So one, he had chosen the capital. And the significance of all, always making it mysterious, like it was the gods who asked me to plant the two trees. And the, it is the wish of the gods that this one should die and this, and this should one grow. should grow. It makes the people, because Professor Mbiti has always argued that the African is incurably spiritual, religious, religious, very yeah. spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so anything that you have spirit attached to it, the African would easily accept. And that's why Kofanochi would become great. He was a prophet. Mm -hmm. He was the mouthpiece of our gods. And so they accepted Kumasi as a city delivered by the gods themselves. The second one was that if you want or say to, to his own friend mm -hmm. to become their unquestionable leader, because you see, the state started growing at the Asumeja area. And so the preeminent of all the state was the uh, uh, Asumeja state, mm -hmm. even before Kokofu and others would come in. So you needed somebody whose leadership would not be questioned by anyone. He made them to know that on this particular Friday that everybody is supposed to come to Kumasi, the new capital. Go, the gods are going to reveal to us the one who would unquestionably be your leader. Mm -hmm. No more rotation. At first, it rotated among the various Oyoko stools. And that was the reason why... What is Oyoko? The Oyoko is one of the seven or eight Akan clans. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have a Diana mm -hmm. and then Asuna. We have Aguna, Oyoko, as Saint Bretio, mm -hmm. as a Chiri. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Oyoko, as I said, mm -hmm. one of them, they mm -hmm. are the royals. It was rotating among them. And it was through this rotational system that the Baule people got angry and left and went to settle in present day Good Ivory boy. Coast. So, 
the thing must be within one royal house so that the blood would flow. And then his tool must be seen to be more sacred and therefore easily acceptable. Confanoche mm -hmm. asked all the states forming Ashanti, and you know them, Mampon, uh, Bekwai, uh, Jabe, Ofenso, Insuta, Ejeso, Kokofu, Sumeja, Kumase, all of you come. And they were all assembled on that day. And then he would perform just as we have already said. Mm -hmm. And in the end, before I forget, I should let everybody know that Konfanochi had advised these chiefs mm -hmm. to bring their black stools. Okay. You know, the Akan and then the Ewes, the Gans, we have stools, and then the Nordness have skins. So they should bring their sacred black stools. What is the significance of a black stool? The, whoever occupies the black stool actually occupies the state. Mm -hmm. So if you possess the black stool, it means that family is the owner of the state. They mm -hmm. alone can install a chief. Mm -hmm. Just as in the north, there's a, a certain mm. skin. Yeah. Whoever occupies it is actually the owner. So in contemporary terms, that will, those will be the executive, right? The, the people who run the, 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 the state or the country. Yeah, the, the royals. Yes, the royals. Once you sit on, and everybody has got its own stool. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And this particular, the, 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 the kings who ruled each of the territories I have mentioned. Yeah. You know, everybody had a stool. And equal to each other's stool. So they all brought their black stools? They, yes, they brought the stool, and they were equal. Mm -hmm. So one day brought the stool, Confanoche performed whatever you perform, mm -hmm. which I wouldn't want to go deep inside them. Decide that the God said we should dig a very big hole, and then the next thing will follow. They dug the hole for him. After that, he said, the God said we should put everybody, should put in your black stool. He put in the black stools, and then he covered it. And then he said, our gods are going to reveal to us a stool of all stools. A stool that all these would represent all the stools down there. Mm -hmm. And which everybody will have to fight for. Mm -hmm. Which would never have to depart you. And which, unlike the stools we have buried, should never be sat upon by anybody. Because that stool itself will have to sit on another stool. So the golden stool came about, either from heaven, mm -hmm. as the Ashanti warrior tradition tells us, or wherever it came from, okay. the truth is that the golden stool is still there. And is it true that <clears> it represents <throat> the sum sum, the, the soul of the Ashanti nation? That's the right word. The sum sum of the Ashanti nation mm -hmm. is in this stool mm -hmm. and no other stool. Mm -hmm. And as I said, it's so sacred that no, the, 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 the stool shouldn't touch the earth, yes. okay. never. And two, no one is supposed to sit on it. And it actually sits on another stool. It sits on another stool. Almost like a person. As a person, mm. revered, and, and it's worshipped as God. Mm. So when this tool came about, you know, as students of history, as we have already said, as students of history, we have to go into the philosophy of Confuanochi. You see, before the golden stool were in existence other stools. In fact, the Shantis themselves have a proverb that Kumasi Betu Amakum. So it means that there were some stools in Ashanti. Kumasi came to meet Amakum, Amakum okay. and then Tafu okay. and Ofenso. Our community states. Yes, okay. bigger, bigger than this stool. Mm -hmm. You know. So it meant that for as long as these black stools were present, their occupiers would one day say that, ah. But after all, I was here before you. Yes, that's one too. Yeah. No matter how sacred the golden stool, my stool came first. Mm -hmm. So now that you have buried your stool, and Confanoche is asking you to go and carve a new one, the new one you are carving is younger than the, the golden, the golden stool. stool. Yeah, smart statesmanship and statecraft. Yeah. So yeah. now you see that you are subservient naturally <laughs> to the golden stool. Mm. Second, so when you go to war, you know, and you lose your stool. It's painful, but at the end of the day, you always remember that it was a wooden stool and we can at any time carve another mm -hmm. one in replacement. Mm -hmm. But this one is solid gold and you cannot easily replace that gold. Mm -hmm. This one came directly from the gods. They were not, it's not made of human hands and human ingenuity. So you have to put everything into it mm -hmm. in order to protect the golden stool. 
So now you understand the relevance of Ya Asantua. Indeed. So after the Golden Stool came about, Ashanti now had a new obligation of not fighting for the state or the king, mm -hmm. but to protect the, the stool. Golden Stool. The very stool <clears throat> that the British governor want, demanded to, to, yes. be, to be to And be that was the essence of their unity. Mm -hmm. Because anytime you install an Asante him, you install him to serve the golden stool. And everybody also serves the golden stool. So it talks about Ashanti unity. And then the unity of all Ashantis, mm -hmm. because even the Asante him serves the, the golden stool. What is Sikadwe? The Sikadja. That is a Sikadja Kofi was the name given by a Kofi Anochi to that the stool. stool. Okay. That's so it's almost it a, it's a personality. A, a, in fact, mm, a cult mm, that is worshipped. Because Kofi is a, a boy, a male born on Friday. On Friday. Mm. So it's like a human being mm. and a greater human being than the rest of us. You know, and I, I'm really glad you've given us this history because it will now tie us nicely into the story of Yasantua and uh, her reaction to the demand by this governor for the stool. So let's